So welcome to Scrapbook Live. I am Megan Jacks. Today is May 3rd. We have a fun project for you today. Um, it's from the Creative Memories blog. The original blog post came out um, October 1st of 2020. Hard to believe it's been that long ago. But that's when that, I believe sometime that summer is when the Jumbo Circle came back to Creative Memories. It had been around. And then it went away for a little while as the company went through some reorganization. Then they brought it back as a promotional item for as a join gift in 2018. So um, I really, really wanted one, but you could only get it if you signed up as a new advisor. So I was having to try to track one down um, on the resale market. I did. I found one. But then they told me that they would bring back um, the earliest they'd be able to bring back the jumbo circle would be 18 months after that join advisor, um, promotion. So 18 months was middle of, uh, it was in summer of 2020. So that's when it came back. So we're going to be using the jumbo circle. We have lots of fun with that. Um, this actually might be the first scrapbook live I've done with it, but I've got lots of other videos out there. If you need inspiration on what to do with the jumbo circle. So we got the jumbo circle, the, pr um, you'll want the printout from the, this is from the creative, um, copied and pasted from the blog post from October 1st of 2020. And I'm actually gonna switch over to my um, desktop so we can take a look at what we're going to be putting together. So for today, um, this project, there's actually three different projects that were included in the blog post. And I chose this one because I thought it was bright and colorful. It does use the Fresh Fusion Rainbow Collection, which was um, available in 2020. It's no longer available. But one thing to note about that collection was in the rainbow pack, there were these packs of or pieces of paper that were tonal, and they had this built-in triangular effect um, into the paper. So where you're seeing two tones of the green or two tones of the red, those were built into the paper pack itself. So I really actually like that feature of the background where you can see those two different, um, the two different reds, it's very subtle, or you can definitely see the two different greens. I like that effect. So we're at, we're going to build that effect using our paper. It was built into the backgrounds of the um, uh, Fresh Fusion Rainbow Pack, but we're gonna be building it ourselves. So the directions here, they're really for if you're using the Fresh Fusion Pack, I'm gonna be building this using Baked With Love. It was an advisor exclusive uh, paper pack that. Um, just recently came out. It was the quarter three or quarter two uh, um, advisor pack. Um, so if you're wanting a pack of this paper and you can talk to your advisor um, about how maybe you can get one from them, I did send it out to customers as a thank you gift. They would just be recently receiving that. So um, the Baked with Love, it's great. It works perfect for my photos. I've actually had these photos for a while. This is back from, I think, of um, fall maybe of 2020 that I took my child up to the King Arthur Baking School in Mount Vernon or Burlington, Washington, and we went and did their pasta class. So that was a lot of fun. We, these are putting together some raviolis. Um, so I have had these photos and not sure what to do with them. And the Baked with Love uh, color palette actually works perfect. So that's what I'm working with. I'm working with some photos um, from a pasta class that we took. So... What I wanted to do is I wanted to recreate the background. You can see the triangular details um, in the background. So I want my background to be tonal. I don't want it to be high contrast. So I don't want my um, triangles to be different colors from each other or overly different colors. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be using the yum paper, this tonal brown, and I'm going to pair it with the tonal hearts. So these two pieces of paper, we're gonna cut these into triangles and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I have two patterns of paper. You can see when they're side by side, you can see the difference between them, but they're not super high contrast. So it's gonna work perfect. So that's the goal there. I'm gonna use these two colors to make my background. I have a piece of brown of the hot chocolate cardstock that I'm gonna build my paper on. The reason I'm using the um, hot fudge is because if there are little gaps between my triangles, the darker color won't stand out quite as much as a um, the white might. So I'm gonna go just keeping that nice and dark in that background. So these are gonna become my background pieces. I will show you how to cut those in a minute. 
The other details that we can see in our original, we have an interior circle color, and then of course that outer ring. And the outer ring has two different colors. Ideally, this is gonna be a piece that you're going to be able to cut from one sheet of paper. So using both sides of that sheet of paper. I'm gonna be doing that with this striped paper. So it's stripe on one side, the opposite side just kind of has a, a pinned, um, pinched, uh, lined um, diamonds on it. You can just see those um, stripes on there creating that diamond effect. So that's gonna become my outer ring. And in the directions, they actually don't have us making a ring. You could make a ring. Um, they actually just have you cutting the circle and then laying another circle on top. If you wanted to cut out the in interior of the green circle where they show that you could, I'm going to actually just leave it as a, a circle um, because I'm piecing my pe everything together. It was just easier to leave it as pie wedges than cutting it as a ring and cutting those individual wedges from the ring. And then we're going to need an interior piece. I am using the butcher block as my interior piece. So that interior circle where you see the polka dots, I'm gonna use as this interior piece. All right, so we're gonna get, get going to, um, to put together the background. So the background, because I'm um, combining two pieces of paper, I need four six by six squares, two of each, um, I need, two six by six squares from each of these pieces of paper. So I'm gonna trim this at in half as six inches. And I've actually already done that because remember I practiced yesterday. So I know what I was doing today. Learned a couple tips that I definitely wanna be able to point out to you. So here are my two six inches wide by 12 inches tall. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna cut these in half again. I want them to be six by six squares. So grab my trimmer, bring it over here, and I'm gonna cut this at six inches. Now I have directional paper. So right now that directional paper aspect does not matter. It's gonna matter in a few minutes. So there's the six by six squares. And here's my six by six of the this paper here. So you can see I have got very directional paper. I've got a top. I don't want my hearts to be upside down. I don't want my words to be upside down. What I'm doing here is going to get everything set up so that I can just add these as we cut them apart. I wanna be able to show you how we're gonna lay them out on the next piece. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my background piece ready to go. I don't have a very big table. I'm really jealous of every of all of you that might have really big spots, but um, this table works fine for the space I have it in, but I would definitely love to have a larger work surface. Okay. So I've got my, this is where my papers are gonna go once I cut my triangles. I'm gonna build kind of that pinwheel effect around it. But obviously I don't wanna have pieces that are upside down. So when I cut my papers, all right, I've got them both set up so everything's at the top. You can see I have a top to my photos, the top edge, the top edge. I've made little cheat diagrams for you guys so you can see what we're gonna do. It's also to remind myself. We're going to cut one of each. So these two pieces, I'm going to cut from the upper left to the lower right with that top edge. Here's my top edge, upper left to lower right. The second set of squares, one from each sheet, I'm going to cut from the lower left to the upper right. This is important because I have directional paper. If you have non-directional paper, this may not matter one bit. But because with the triangles, you can really move those around. But I need to keep this in mind because of how I've got the directional, the, the patterns. So let's go ahead. We're gonna cut, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut the brown ones first. So I'm, I'm gonna mimic this first one. I'm gonna mimic this top one. So my upper left to my lower right, upper left to lower right. 
and I'm lining it up in my trimmer. So now, when I put this on the paper, these are gonna slide diagonal from each other, all right? Do so you see how those slide diagonal? One stays up at the top, one comes down to this lower quadrant. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut my second sheet. I need to follow this pattern. So here's my top edge. I'm gonna cut from my upper right to my lower left. Upper, the upper right to the lower left. And now you can see that's gonna slide apart and right there. Now, truthfully, this would actually be a really nice background just by itself, right? I've got the tonal browns coming in there. We got that pinwheel effect. So easily something to do. You don't necessarily have to bring in a second sheet of cardstock if you don't want to, uh, or uh, designer paper, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I just love the hearts. I thought the hearts were pretty and they're really um, a kind of almost yeah, that really dark red, almost like that, um, uh, think of the red velvet cake. It has a nice dark color. So I'm going to do the same thing with my hearts. Starting with this piece, I'm going to cut one this direction following my first template. Upper left to lower right. And you can see how these are going to pair in here. One comes down, one will go up. The same thing is going to happen on the other side. So there's my background. You can see here I've got it put together. So if you need to, on this, and I probably should have done it. I mean, I'm not always great about uh, thinking ahead of time exactly how I plan to put things together when I put the diagram or I put the directions. Just draw a couple squares. Right top. And then one of them, you'll just come in and do your dashed line going one direction. And then you'll do your dashed line going the other direction just as a reminder of how to cut those six by six squares. You can give yourself those measurements. So that you have those on there. You can just see here, it's kind of, I wrote it with the thin tip, but you can see I added those squares cheat sheets on there. So if you print and save your directions, you have the ability, you know now how to make that background. This background could be used for anything. So before I go and cut the next piece, I'm actually gonna just go um, adhere these pieces into place um, so that I have, I'm ready to go once. I'm gonna have a lot of other pieces coming out when I um, when we make the circle, we're gonna cut the circle into pie wedges. You don't have to. Um, but I'm going to, and I would rather just go ahead and have this piece already stuck down, the background built, but then I'm not having to build it later. If your center area doesn't line up perfectly, that's okay. That's all gonna be covered. I do wanna make sure I get the tips of the triangles covered so that um, they stick down. These, these tips, these points, those are what, when you're putting it in your page, putting on your page protectors, sliding it in your, um, the top loading pages, that's where you're likely gonna catch something if you don't have it lined up or adhered down well. Just 
just getting those put into place. Like I said, I'm not too worried. If my middle is a little bit off, it's gonna get covered up. One last piece and then we'll move on to the cutting of that circle. All right, so there's my background. So the um, I am, for those of you who are just joining, um, I this the paper I'm using is called Baked with Love. It is available as an advisor exclusive, so you'll want to talk to your advisor. If you do not have one, you're more than welcome to reach out to me, and I can um, help you get um, set up with that pack of paper. So there's the paper there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the jumbo circle and we are going to cut our outside circle, the big circle, the one that makes, it's what looks like the ring. All right, we're gonna cut that. So it's whatever you're using to make this outside piece. I am using the striped paper. The opposite side has the diamonds on it. We're gonna use our jumbo circle. And I am going to go ahead and I'm actually going to work from the opposite side. I'm going to work with the whites, the lighter side, because I'm going to use the pencil marks. We need to, you're going to want to have a pencil available. The pencil is going to help guide us a little bit on this. Um, I'm going to line, I put my paper on my cutting mat so that it's centered. I'm going to line up my mat. You can see here, I've got some marks on my um, template. And um, what's going to happen here is um, if you need to know how to mark your jumbo circle template, I've got a video for that. I will link it down in the description. But by lining it up here, what we're going to do is after we cut our outside circle, I'm going to mark the, um, the 45 degree angles because those are where we're going to cut with the trimmer and it's just easier. So have your pencil available. Um, we're going to go ahead and cut that. So once you put um, your, you cut, and we're going to cut with the green blade on the outside edge, outside track. I'm leaving my template in place. If you are feeling brave, you can cut out the inside. It ultimately is covered. You would want to use the blue blade on the inside track. So yes, I see a question. Um, my stripes are down largely because I want to have the lighter um, print up so I can see my pencil lines. Now I'm going to tell you right now when you're doing this, your stripes on as we're putting the circle together are going to be kind of all over the place. I was okay with that. Um, it's the way we'll see how it turns out. So I've got my template on here. I've got my pencil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and where I see my black lines indicating there's my zero or what essentially is 12 o'clock. Come over here to this piece and that is three o'clock. Come down where it says is six o'clock and over here to nine. Now I need to mark the 45s. If you have your um, cutting mat, you could be marking the six inch sides, the 45 degree angles. You just wanna make sure if you're doing that, that you're, you've taken the time to center everything in the middle. Come in here, the 45s. This is gonna be helping us to cut our paper with the trimmer. We're gonna cut this into pie wedges. So I've got my lines, you can't see them, um, but they are there. Now I need, I need my trimmer now. Okay, so the nice thing in general, when you're working with the jumbo circle in your Creative Memories trimmer, 
you can actually use the grooves between this open area on the trimmer bed, between our two um, where the track comes down and sits flush. You can actually line your paper up and have it sit in the middle of that. And that will actually naturally center your paper. If I just cut it right there, I've got it nestled right here in the middle. It's down here flush at the bottom. And I were to cut here, that would be center. Now I've already made a center line, so I'm gonna rotate it so that those center lines come over here and I can see top and bottom lines are lined up with my cut track. For this first cut, we didn't necessarily need it to be, we didn't need the lines. We could have cut this paper in half without any problem. I just like the pencil marks on there. It reminds me that I'm doing it correctly. There's our first one, our first cut. Now the next cut, since we have our pencil mark, all I'm gonna do is line it up. You can line it at the top of the bottom, come over until I reach my pencil mark. That's gonna have me cut this piece in half. If I had not used my pencil mark, if I had not done it, what I could have done is folded it in half, and I could have pinched. And that would find the middle at the bottom. I could line that middle up at my cutting line and there it would be. That actually may give you more of a true middle. So if you feel more comfortable, if you don't trust your pencil marks, The last one, we need to cut these in a total of eight wedges. I'm gonna come over here and now what you do is you're just lining up. You wanna nestle at the bottom. So your curve is in the bottom hitting both sides of the, um, we can call it maybe the cliffs. I don't know what you wanna call those. They're right down here, the, this edge right here. I wanna make sure I'm down here at the bottom and then I'm gonna make sure at the top that the point of that wedge is gonna be on the cut line. That's how I know I've got it centered. And you're just gonna finish making all those cuts. And you're gonna have your pie, all your pie pieces. And if you want, as you're cutting these, you can start to lay them out. They will kind of nestle in your wedges, in with your, you can kind of figure out, I don't know, I'm not worried about my stripes, that they're not matching, it's okay. I guess that piece would go there. And you just finished cutting all those wedges using the same technique, cutting those pieces. The ravine, somebody commented, called it the ravine. I like that. Down in the ravine of your trimmer. And again, if the pieces don't line up in the middle, that's okay, we're gonna be covering that up. Really what we're trying to make sure is we get a good exterior ring going. So I need to grab some more um, repositionable adhesive. I made the mistake of not having it available and I'm almost out. 
and you're definitely going to want repositionable adhesive. Well, maybe there's more on there than I thought. Grab my blue silicone mat here because I am going to be putting quite a bit of adhesive in the middle or on that tip, right? I want to make sure that tip stays down. Making, I'm going to go ahead and re line up my background on my trimming mat. It just helps me know how far in I need to put these squares. I mean, it really should just come to the middle. That should be, I mean, you should be applying these pieces right over the, um, the triangles that you've already put down. I, so I see the question somebody's asking what's easier to do, making the pasta or making the layout. Um, the pasta, pasta is one of those things I found it to be is actually fairly easy to make. I don't think it's difficult, but it's time consuming when I can literally just open a pack. Now I know it's not the same, right? I totally did not want to, that's supposed to be this piece. Um, I know it's not the same. I mean, homemade pasta is a wonderful, we have, um, there's a, one of my neighbors, um, her mother is full Italian and they had us over one time for a homemade spaghetti, you know, from scratch, um, piece th there that was pretty fantastic. And I feel a little bit spoiled now that I've had fresh pasta like that, but it's, you know, it's not, it's, you have to think ahead. As she said they make it in bulk and then they freeze it. Um, I would need to go to like a pasta making party where you can just make a lot of it, somebody to help me. I don't know that I know the consistency really well. So I could use the outer paper from the other one. So what that reference would be is coming in and I could line this up. And that would help me. That would be a really great idea. I'm pretty, I'm pretty close. I don't actually think I did a very good job centering my paper, but that is a fantastic idea. Use that outer edge, line things up and then put it in there. Get this final piece on. And then the last bit that goes on is pretty easy. Yeah, I should be good. I'm mostly concerned about my outside edges because like I said, I'm covering up the middle. So there we go. That looks pretty good. My outside edges are pretty good. Oops. Okay, now I need to cut that center piece. To do that, I'm going to be using the, um, the butcher block paper. I don't wanna cut on my silicone mat, that would be disastrous. And I'm gonna be cutting, once again, using my jumbo circle. And the directions, I'm just going with the directions. The directions, they want us to use the um, inside track with the green blade. Inside track green blade. And you can center this. Like, I don't need to center it. I could come over here if I wanted you to give myself some bigger chunks of that paper left. I just need to be able to get a piece out of the middle or out of uh, uh, this piece. So I'm going to offset it a little bit. That way, if I wanted to punch some borders or something there, I definitely could. Or, I mean, that's just a fun, you know, you can offset your circle there. I could totally 
That's fun. Just have a circle down there. So options. This goes in the middle. How wonderful that just comes together. So now I just need to adhere this down. I can, I might offset my, um, the pieces of the butcher block here. I think, I don't know. Well, maybe I'll try it like this. Straight up and down. Figure out where your center is. Um, sometimes what I like to do here is I'm just looking, I can see the overhead camera. Do I have it centered? You could come if I needed to, I could fold it in half and just give myself that a tiny little pinch to help me orient where the middle is. And even the same here, just giving it, it's just a tiny, tiny pinch to find the quadrants. That can maybe help. Maybe. You can also use a ruler. <laughs> you could come in with the jumbo circle. If you had cut it out of the center, um, you could, I could have used the other piece of paper. Um, I see a question about the red blade on the big circle. Um, I used, I used the, uh, the green blade. I use the green blade for both. That was the instructions that they gave us here. You could have, you could have done this with the red blade and give yourself a little bit more of that outer ring exposed. This ring here would be a little bit narrower. Um, all of this, you could have adjusted the size of those blades if you wanted to. So that I think looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is just lift it up, put some adhesive down. That way I'm not trying. Once I have the, once I have it placed, I don't have to try to recenter it. That looks good enough. Okay. So now one of the elements I really liked about this was I liked these rainbow borders. I think it's a nice little detail to come in side to side with it. It kind of keeps, leads your eye in towards the middle. That's really what those, um, these um, border elements are doing is just kind of keeping your eye flowing to the middle. So I use the dine border punch. This is retired. Um, I used it and I punched with the hot fudge cardstock and I'm going to come in. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with, um, I'm only going to come in with part of it. So, um, I'm going to cut this piece in half. I don't need the whole section. You could do a full 12 inch. And I think what I'll do is I'm actually going to cut this knife off of this side and leave it just with the fork on that edge. I'm not sure that that's technically the correct way, but let's face it. This table on these, this dime punch is not set correctly. <laughs> I don't think it is, or I have it backwards. Maybe I punched it backwards. And on this side here, I'm going to do the same where I'll leave the fork on that side. So I'll cut the spoon off and I'm just trying to make it look even, trying to make it have a finished edge as compared to just that abrupt edge where it, um, when you punch the edge of the paper, it just gives you that straight edge. I'm going to do a little fussy cutting to get that finished edge. So yeah, there's lots of, I do think it worked out great. It kind of does resemble a plate. The colors work out really well with the photos. I, um, truthfully here, you have a background. You can put your photos on here however we want. We could do the borders however we want. You come across the bottom with a uh, set of borders. Um, I mean, the jump, you just really, you have just a background. So um, what we have going here is I wanted to still use how they have this overall concept and I'm going to put my photos on, but I'm putting my photos on how they make sense for my photos. Um, this maybe makes sense for the photos that they have with the embellishments that they've added, but I am just going to add my photos kind of clustered in the middle.
And what I can do too, is I have a few of the embellishments. So there was a little embellishment pack that came, um, that's available for the baked with love. It does have a lot of, you know, more of uh, baking, obviously. So it has a mixer and measuring spoons and, and like a little cookie jar and a rolling pin. I picked out the ones that were maybe more relevant just towards, you know, pasta making or towards general baking. So I have the little, there's this little, um, recipe card that I could use. I may actually trim down this piece to come in more just on the smaller pasta. Um, I wasn't sure this, I cut down to three and three quarters. These are three and three quarters wide by five tall. And then I matted, um, about three eighths of an inch bigger. So this is a four and one eighth inch mat. This is a four and one eighth by five and three eighths inch tall. But I've got some um, you know, coming in with I can come in with however I want my um, embellishments to be. And there's some little hearts. And I'll have a little bit to add with the yeah, I think this piece here in the middle, I need to trim down just a little bit. Or maybe this will come across here. I don't think I need a whole lot of um, journal space, just saying that we had a good time going to do the pasta class. It was yummy. We made a, there was a mushroom based one that we did. Um, I think it was a mushroom based um, sauce. And I'm the only one in my family who likes mushrooms. It was delicious. I was more than happy to have it all to myself that I didn't have to share <laughs> it all with everybody. So, all right. So I need a little bit of detail work. I'm like I said, I'm gonna trim down this photo. It's a little too big. Um, I wanna have it just be more of a little accent. I don't need all that three and three quarters. I'm gonna bring it down probably closer to almost a two by two, maybe a two and a quarter, um, centering around this set of um, raviolis there. But in general, you can see how this all came together. So a lot of fun, a fun technique to be able to do. Um, it does take a little bit of effort, um, but I think once you do the first time, you can see how the cuts become quicker. You're more confident when you're putting adhering pieces into place. So that is um, the layout. I will finish it up, get it posted for you guys to be able to see. But hopefully you have a chance to put it together. It's always fun to work with the jumbo circle. You could do this with other jumbo patterns. Um, cutting those patterns can be, um, especially if you do want to um, pie slice them the way that we did with the jumbo circle, you kind of have to experiment a little bit. I would say try with some scrap paper before you pie cut things like the jumbo hexagon or the other um, items. Sometimes just folding in half and giving those quick pinches so that you can find those center points is probably going to be your easiest, but of course you wouldn't have to pie wedge, um, and flip all those pieces. If you don't want to, the background can be of course done, um, that way, or you can leave it as a solid background. Just, um, have fun playing with those larger jumbo custom cutting system patterns. Right now, the only one that's available on the creative memories website is the, um, is the circle is the jumbo circle, but um, there have been other ones in the past. So you might have them in your collection. You can take a dig through your stash and see what you've got. So thanks so much for joining me today. I um, was actually kind of hoping that my UPS guy might show up. I had a two day order coming with the Creative Memories um, new products. It's not here. So um, I will have to wait a little bit longer to play with my lifter stick. Hopefully some of you were able to get those before it sold out. They did substitute out um, some new products or some different promotional items. It's the, um, oh my goodness, it's the heart stickers with the purple and I think it was more of like a mauve colored um, uh, metallic dot pen. So that's kind of fun. And, um, we should be seeing, let's see, next week is going to be the virtual crop. So hopefully you guys are all ready for that will be coming up next weekend coincides with mother's day weekend. Um, I will, we will have scrapbook live next week. So on May 10th, it's May 17th. That will be the not having one. Cause I will be in Mexico. Um, I'm going to see about, uh, maybe Tessa and I will pop on at the 10 o'clock time Pacific to give ourselves a quick update on what kind of fun we're having. And 
um, if I can remember the time, you guys have to forgive me. I'm pretty certain Puerto Vallarta is an hour ahead of Pacific. So I'm going to have to like remind myself that I have to get on 11 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. Cause then it would be like 9 a.m. Pacific and it would be all messed up. So once again, like I always say, thanks for joining me. I'm going to get this all finished up, get the final, um, uh, version of it posted so you guys can see. And if you do share, remember I have on the, um, there it is the hashtag. If you share it in with scrapbooking with Megan, please use the hashtag so we can keep track of all the wonderful layouts shared. All right, everybody have a fantastic day and I will see you all next week. Thanks so much for watching.